So you probably already have used one of these front-end frameworks and you start to wonder are they actually the same especially if you have tried to use two of them and I have spent a lot of time reading all the documentation for all these six front-end frameworks React, Angular, Vue.js, AngularJS 1, Solid and Svelte and I found that they are very similar to each other and they have similar patterns to which map like each one of the front-end frameworks to the other one and I found that they consist of main four parts and they have like seven pieces basically to collect all of them but they are consist of four main categories the first category is the state the second category is managing communication between different components and and the third part is side effect to do async actions and the fourth part is the change detection so every front-end framework would have these four parts and I've created like a map for each method from like each framework to the other to find like if they are actually similar and they are actually similar like you see here and I created also like this architecture design for all these front-end frameworks like every front-end framework would have the same idea the same concept so basically after learning from this video you would be able to transition to any framework you would like to use like any front-end framework like now past future anyone would be beneficial to understand in this video and let's start with the first part which is the state and you already know in front end is based on the mvc model you would have the model which is your data or your state you would have the view which is the thing you would render in html and you would have a controller to glue between the model and the view and it would manage like different states man like different effects would happen on the side and so on so every front end framework would have the mvc model and let's take as a smallest component instead of like looking into the big architecture let's look into a small component you would always have the internal state for example with react you have like set state with view you have like data with angular you would have the input and you would have your internal state in this case and when you apply certain changes with the controller for example when a user clicks you would always fire an event and the event would create a new state basically to change the state and then there is a change detection algorithm to find first part is when something changed because it doesn't know when something changed either it would like always loop and always listens but it's not efficient so there is a way to know when something changed and the second is what has changed and from this what part it would know which part it need to render inside the view instead of like rendering everything of course like if the state all of it changed in this case it would do the full re-render for the component but every front-end framework would have these three parts you would always have the state for example if we go to react you would have your state you would have an angular you have class variables reactive and data in view dollar state with angular js you would have create signal and variable and all of this is the internal state and when you would like to apply change there would be something in the view to either click listen set timeout whatever it would be fire an event and change the state and it's always in one direction we call it like one direction of change one direction of flow of data and so on but it's always in one direction you cannot like do like backwards and so on so this would be the, f the smallest unit for our component so this is the first part second part is the computed state or sometimes you call it also drive state and the idea behind this is that you could have two states or one state and then you have another state that is computed based on the first two state on the first state a famous example you would have the first and last name and in this case instead of having a third state called full name which is a very famous mistake people do is that no you would use a drive state and from the drive state you would combine both of them another maybe you would like to multiply a certain number you would like change get a, like a, a small thing from a full array like first or last element for example or find the length for it so instead of doing this computation like every time the props change you would have something called drive state the benefit from this is that you memoize them so every framework would have a way to memoize this state and by memoizing you reduce the amount of cpu of course like if you have a small ui application you wouldn't notice it but if you have a big front-end application it, it's noticeable the delay from all of this so instead of having this search state and always computing them you would use the drive state
with reactive with have use memo with angular you have functions sometimes you could use like uh, listeners when like with life cycle hook when something's changed and you would have computed with vue.js you would have functions in angular js as well you could also use uh, watchers as well with uh so just you have create memo and then there is the dollar sign so both of these i think the order may be incorrect i would fix it you of course i could find a link for this table in the description so no need to take notes you would find all the important links in the description but the first uh, like the one and three are internal state so they are internally for the component this part shared state and shared state happens when you have either a parent and a child or you have two sibling to each other let's take the easiest part which is a parent and a child and the idea for parent and child is that you would store the state outside of the outside of the child and you need to communicate it to the child somehow and every front-end framework would map it through props there would be a way to pass the state from the parent to the child and when you would like to change something from the child to the parent most of them would use events or with react you would pass like a method inside the child and then the child calls this method or you could use like event listener as well if you would like to do it but the idea is that you always store the state outside okay what is the famous example famous example is forms so you would have a form and inside this form you would have like different fields yeah this is not a great form yeah, you would have your form here and then you would have like maybe a text field you have a radio button you would have a selector and instead of storing the state in each one of them and managing somehow of course like it doesn't work as that you would have the state from the outside and you would pass the state internally through props and each one of these elements could have a derived state not an internal state but rather a derived state to change the prop coming from the form into the state that this, this component needs for example with the selector you would pass only like maybe two things you would pass the state for the list and also the selected element for the selector so in this case maybe you would pass it like uh, two variables and then the selector would map the list to the list to be rendered eventually but like in summary you would store the state outside inside this form and then you would pass it with props and when the selector changes it would fire an event to the parent component to change it so this would be the first one which is between parent and child second one is maybe you have a sibling and the idea of sibling you would have another component here on the same level or in another complete level but there is no direct communication like this with parent and child and it also has a state it needs to listen to a certain state and so on so instead of like storing the state in the parent and the other parent or this component and the other component most of them of course they are called containers you could also check the video for the front-end framework like front-end architecture i would add a link for it as well uh, but in summary you would have like a container and another container so instead of storing the state in both of them you would have a state in the outside and with the state in the outside you would in this case store it here and then you would map it to the parent and either it would listen so it like either with committed value or taking the value directly from the state and then it would render it in the view or maybe it needs to pass it to the child in this case you will pass it from the parent through the props into the child and then render it to the view the idea is that you would have two components sharing the same state in this case so that's why it is called share state so we i think like we covered now three points so with the shared state with react you have use context angular you have services and ngrx with view you have provide and inject to share state between different containers and angular.js has services as well similar to angular with solid.js you have use context Svelte well, has set context and get context yeah yes maybe i just need to be corrected i will correct this one but this is a part for the shared state and we also covered the communication so we now also cover the props so we have like arguments you pass it with react you pass it from the inside to the inside with angular you have add input also same props also with Vue.js you also have class variables here and with Sol uh, solid.js and svelte you also have arguments and export
to have access to the props and with events you have callbacks in react add output to emit events with vue.js you also emit events angerjs callback similar to react to react as well so js callbacks and with wealth you have dispatch similar to vue.js you find a little bit like solid.js is very similar to what react has as well so now let's discuss the third part which is the side effects and side effects is when you have call to an async thing that you would do this async part is not related to the single flow of change that we have internally so an example you would like to call the api to get the list of accounts or users you would like to call the api to set some data when the state changed or when you would like to call set timeout or change the local storage or when you are even calling a third party library all of this we call like a sync api you send it and you don't know when it would come back and it is not part of the single flow of change because you know like inside the state you always have a way to map a state to the view for example using the first name you would always have a way to show it like either with curly braces and um, you don't have this with side effect for example let's take the api you would call the api when someone clicks a button so when they click the button you would need to call the api outside it is not part of the flow of change and when it is done it would set the state that's why we have this diagram you would have an event when the user clicks it calls a side effect either inside your components using the fetch api or of course like the more cleaner part is calling it in a service and when the side effect is done it would come back change the state and then do the change detection part we'll discuss this again and uh, it will change the state and then it would change the view and this is why we call them side effects another one maybe you have a third party library to do charts for example usually you would get an npm package to do the chart part but this is like um, not how we would like to do these videos we don't like use third party libraries directly but we try to understand how they do it so with a third party library, they, like you would have an internal state encapsulating this component. And when you change the props, it would change the internal state. And then it would have a side effect to send it to the third party library to map the chart. Or when an event come back, of course, like the event is another thing, but rather we speak about the side effect. So it always, it comes like this way. So it would come, change the state, and then change the chart or like we said with api or set timeout and local storage so every front-end framework the same has it so with react you would have use effect of course you have used it if you use react and you would have an angle js you'd have lifecycle hook usually in libraries you would have either like methods similar to react you would have lifecycle hooks or you could have watchers so all of them do the same thing with Vue.js, you would have watcher watching a certain state, similar exactly to use effect. Angle.js, dollar watcher, so the JS have create effect, and uh, after update with Svelte. And you would find like Angle.js is a little bit influenced by Vue.js at some point, and it is. So this part, this would be the side effect. It's usually are calling a third party library or an API to change the state later as an async way but it is not part of the single change of state. Now the last part, which is the change detection. You would remember from the diagram now, like this would be the full architecture and you would have always this change detection. And this is what is the difference between all these front-end frameworks. All these front-end frameworks have these three parts, but they always differ here in the change detection, how fast they are doing it, how smart they are doing it, how reliable it is and so on. And before we discuss that, or like the strategies between all of them let's understand like the like change detection change detection is always consists of two things you would have when to know when something change and then to know what has changed always we need to answer these two questions with when you need to intercept somehow when the state changed so when you access a certain variable you need to know when this variable changed to know like the state and when you know something has changed you would need an algorithm reconciliation sometimes you call it but let's get away of these fancy words you need to know what has changed from the old state to the new state so this is just every reconciliation algorithm or change detection algorithm 
One of the ways to do state to know when variables change either you intercept the methods, for example, with React, you would have set state. So this is one way to do it. You intercept, you have a method to only set it. And with this method, you would know when some state change. And this is where you know when. There is also using proxies with view. They, uh, this is native to the JavaScript. And they use this technology to know when a variable is accessed and changed. And there is also monkey patching. Monkey patching is Angular. It's what is used to basically take every async method. This is a concept that they have sort of it like what it change like what it changes state. A change of state either you change an internal variable, for example, an input, or you change any of the APIs the DOM has, like set state, API calls, and so on. So the monkey patch, monkey patch is overwriting the never native API methods inside the JavaScript. So these are some ways to know when something changed. To know what it changed, you would need to always like diff the old and the new state. For example, the famous one, virtual DOM. With virtual DOM is lightweight for the DOM, but instead of having the full DOM element, you just have three things. You would have what is the element, you would have the different props, and you would have the attributes. So this is uh, like every virtual DOM would have it. And in this case, you would diff the old tree to the new tree and find which element change from all of this and then call the API to change this DOM element. And this is out of scope, like changing this part because it's simple, like you just like call the DOM element to change it. So this is the virtual DOM. This is one way. Another way to do it, with example, with Angular, you just like check the whole variable states and then find which variable change similar to the DOM, the, like virtual DOM. But it's like just changing this, like checking the states. This is with Angular, and with Vuelta and SolidJS, they don't have like any of this. It's just like when you change, it directly changes the DOM. Like check if the state change and then change the DOM directly. So they are much, much faster. They don't need to do like all this reconciliation. So that's why they are almost very close to vanilla JavaScript. So in summary, like each one of the framework would have a technique. So with React, it uses the virtual DOM to check what it changed. And they know like uh, when something, when, when the change happened using the methods. With AngularJS, like we said, it also uses the monkey patching idea. It's both with Angular and AngularJS. And then it checks like every variable when something change. And with the monkey patching, it uses a library called zones.js. And with Vue.js, it's similar to React. It uses virtual DOM. But instead of using the methods to know when something changed, it uses proxies instead. And like we said, this is native to the JavaScript part. AngularJS, similar to like similar to Angular does like you said monkey patching but it uses something called digest cycle it is a little bit older version to checking the variable but rather it does it twice but i wouldn't go into details like all of these frameworks we would have like a specific video for them to discuss them in more details in the future and solid js and svelte they do direct change so this is uh, the change detection for every front-end framework like we said so this is a summary for every front-end framework if you find this video useful and i hope so because after you learn from this video the intention is that no new front-end framework would scare you like when you see a new front-end framework you would say yeah welcome hello i would just read the documentation find these four parts and now i am up to speed similar to people who already know that when you learn a certain language like python or java or whatever or javascript it's easy to transition from one language to the other the same concept are the same they always change it like they are only differ in one small part and of course like it's important to know the small part but it's actually like it's easy to transition so for example i never wrote like very production c code but if i read c code i already able to understand it so that's why it's important to understand the concepts before understanding the tool itself so i hope this video was useful to you if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section and i would reply to all of them and yeah see you in the next video ciao